Our first question is about racing. Why do you do it, or why do you not do it? And what's your next race going to be? Or if you're not going to do it, why is that? Okay, who wants to take that question? Good, Anton. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, I'm Anton Kropichka. Uh I guess the reason I race is twofold. Uh, one, uh, it's for things like this, people come together. Uh, there's just really a, a huge community of like-minded individuals. And uh, but the number, the second reason is I like to run fast and beat people. And, um, it's just it's just pure ego, and that's. I don't know. A lot of times, that's what's driving me. You know, the really hard parts of a race. Um, I think some people will kind of avoid thinking about that or talking about that, but it's definitely a motivator for me. Uh, so the next race that I'm going to be doing, uh, sort of undecided, but I'm thinking about doing the Bandera 100K in Texas in January. Uh, and I'm for sure going to be doing 100K in New Zealand in March. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's it for me. My name is Peter Backlund. Um, I'm. I don't race. I haven't run a race in uh, four or five years. And the reason is, is I simply found that I just had more fun not racing. And uh, several years ago, I was signed up for Hard Rock, run that a couple times. And I realized that if I was going to run Hard Rock, I was going to need to taper for a couple weeks. And then afterwards, I was going to be beat up and I wouldn't be able to do anything for a couple weeks. And that's one month right out in the middle of summer. And uh, I thought, well, I could do a lot of other more fun things with that month. So I stopped racing. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming out. It was fun running. Uh, I'm Scott Jurek. And I guess the reason I race like Tony said, you know, it brings people together, but I think the race environment kind of pulls those survival instincts out of me, and it, I don't like to use the word force, but it pretty much forces me to like, you know, be the best I can be, and so I think competition is helpful when you want to really, um, you know, bring your body to the edge and just see what you're, what you're made of, so that's why I think racing does. Um, but I think you can still get some of those elements. You get caught out in a windstorm or uh, up in a mountaintop somewhere. Uh, you have to survive too. So you don't always have to get in a race. My uh, next event, I'm going to run some like shorter 50 mile, 50k races earlier this spring, and then hopefully everybody says shorter. <laughs> well, considering that, I'm gonna, I want to run another 24 hour in uh, the beginning of the season, so like May June time frame. So that's the focus, and then maybe another 100 mile on the trails. What one training thought would you like to impart? You can do two if you want, but basically one succinct thought that possibly you don't read in the magazine or possibly other people haven't thought of. Or maybe what you think they need to think of. Let's start with Tony again. Um, as a lot of people probably know, I'm not really big on training schedules and that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> So I guess for me, it comes down to uh, really tapping into the passion you have for the sport and using that to motivate yourself on a daily basis um, in order to be consistent. Uh, a lot of times, you know, not every single day is, is a great, like, magical outing, but uh, you have to kind of suffer through those tougher times in order to have the magical outing. So just being consistent in your training is, I think, the most important thing, even if it means just getting in a 20 or 30 minute run uh, if that's all you have time for. Um, so yeah, consistency. I, I don't really think about training because I don't race. <laughs> I just like to go out and run, so that's what I do. And if you do what you like to do, you'll probably keep doing it, and you'll do it as well as you feel like doing. So that's sort of been my philosophy for quite a long time, and um, I'm still doing it. How much do you know? I don't know. I, I typically run about two, two hours most days and, um, and take a day off a week and run something long on the weekend. Sorry, guys. Sorry to interrupt. 
Does anybody own a white Subaru with a dog in it at good times? Somebody needs to get out next to you. They can't get out. Thank you. Next. <laughs> So my best training advice, I would say, if I were to sum it up, uh, number one, listen to your body. And I think it takes a while to learn that. Um, and it's, everybody wants to know when, you know, how do you know when you're pushing too hard? You know, how do you know when you should push through an injury or back off? And I don't think there's a magical answer, but I think the key thing is really pay attention to what your body's telling you. If it's, if it's tired, take it easy that day. If you feel great, you know, push it hard and, and run uh, a bit faster than what you normally do. But when it comes to injuries, too, you, you got to pay attention to it. And as somebody who has treated a lot of injuries, um, had some injuries as well, uh, you want to catch those before they happen. So I think with training, you know, do what you can as far as the volume, but always listen to your body. What single moment can you describe, can you share, that could tell us why you run? A singular instance, a thought, whatever that might be, that epitomizes the sport for you that exists in your heart. What mode? This is why you do that. God, buzz with the winners. Um, uh, let's see. Well, uh, this morning I was out running and. Uh, I was uh, on top of uh, La Plata Peak in the uh, Sawatch Range, and yeah, it's just uh, when I'm out there, it's it was it's pretty windy this morning and uh, kind of miserable actually. But but for like the two hours I was out there, I wasn't that was that's what I was doing. You know, I very much had a purpose during that time to get to the top of the mountain, and then once I was there, to enjoy the downhill on the way back and. Uh, I think a lot of times, you know, we're all looking for some something, somewhere to direct our energies and, uh, and some reason, you know, some sort of purpose. And for that two hours, that's what it was. And there's nothing like just being in the moment like that. I guess uh, that's that's why I did it. Right, that's good. <laughs> I'm thinking about this right now because this is really good. Um, yeah, I think what epitomizes running for me is not a particular moment, but any moment when I feel uh, present. And uh, something about running that it's sort of easy for me to be, feel present and to feel connected with the surroundings. I think that's what Tony was kind of expressing just now. And uh, so I, I keep doing it for that reason. And some days, you know, it's hard to connect to get into the flow. I think people know that term, flow. Some days it's hard to connect with that, but um, other days it just happens. So um, to me, that's what it's all about, actually. So I'll switch it up, um, although I totally agree with uh, Tony and Peter. Um, I don't always think that the, the toughest moments in a race or training are the reason I do it, but I've learned the most from those instances, and I think, um, I guess one moment that kind of epitomizes it was being basically at the lowest point I could possibly be in the bad water back in 2005, where, you know, I just thought, what am I doing out here, and, you know, just, yeah, just didn't quite understand why I would put my body through this. And I think those really low points are sometimes the most magical and that's when you learn the most. So for me, although I don't try to <laughs> mimic those times like that, but those, uh, those I think kind of epitomize like why I'm doing it because I've got to pull myself out of that situation. I think it's useful in life too. Thanks for why we're all out here, whether we run 10K or marathons or ultramarathons.